And that's about it from me. Charlie's next. Until tomorrow morning, from me, bye-bye. How exciting it all is. Radio Ulster just lays out these goodies in front of you and you can't resist any of them. BBC Radio Foil. And BBC Radio Ulster. With Jerry Anderson. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed Gerald Michael Anderson here. Uh, we'll be here until 12 o'clock if you want to contact this programme. Let's try and get the phone number right today. After all, it is important to the people who want to communicate to us. It's 0845 9555 678. I'm reasonably confident that that number will get us. I'll just start this record in a moment. Automatic start is not on, I see. But that's the technical stuff. I need not burden you with that. Right, that's Steve Farmer. That's the song called Good Planets Are Hard to Find. That's from an album called Rocking Horse Head. I'm sorry about that. I had to take my coat off. It's so warm in here. It's now 26 minutes to 11 o'clock. Many things to deal with today, some even of some importance. Right, uh, some emails here. Please give this a mention. This is from, uh, I don't know who it's from. It's from Liz Weir. I was delighted to hear Madge, one of our regular yarn spinners, on talking to you last week before she set off for Malta. Yes, she was heading off there for six weeks or something. Apparently can go to Malta for six weeks for like £15.50. She is a wonderful storyteller. Happy New Year, Liz Weir. The Wednesday, the 10th of January, will be appearing at the Old Museum Arts Centre, Belfast, at 8 p.m. The yarn spinners will present an evening of storytelling with B. Ferguson from Edinburgh. B. tells stories from all over the globe, including wonder tales, legends and supernatural tales. Come along and warm up with a winter's evening with stories and good company, it says here. And uh, oh, Ray McCann sends me an email and he says, uh, I got a Christmas CD of Francis Black. One track which really impressed me, track 17, it's called Legal Illegal. I wonder if you could play it for my friend Val, who lives in Nashville, in America. She listens to your program every morning on the net, and she enjoys the crack. I have emailed her your address and said she's going to ring up. Oh, good, I hope so. I haven't talked to anybody from Nashville for a long time. I hope you do ring if you're listening. By all means, give us a ring and let us know how you survived Hugo's visit. Uh, from Mrs. Evelyn Shannon, she writes to me from Ballymoney, and she says, My husband and I listen each day to your program. I, uh, Tuesday morning you read a couple of poems and I would like it if you could send me a copy of them as it would be very much appreciated. Tuesday. That's only yesterday. Oh yes, I did read a couple yesterday. Yeah, we have quite a few requests for those. Somebody phoned in on Monday a few minutes before closing to find out how to remove candle wax from a wooden floor in a church hall. If they use the following. Blotting paper and a hot iron. It will leave the wax. Sorry, it will lift the wax and not damage the floor. This has been tried and tested on a church floor. I enclose a stamp to do a sample. Thank you very much. There's no need for that, because it's your BBC. Blotting paper on a hot iron. How would you do that? Do you just use the hot iron on the on the chewing gum and then put the blotting paper down? Or do you put the blotting paper down between the chewing gum and the hot iron and then apply the same? You see, it's really more specific here. But I'm sure the people out there would know what we're talking about. Got a plethora of requests here for a lady called uh, Diana Little. We've got a number. It says, please play... Steps by Daniel O'Donnell for my friend's birthday on Wednesday the 17th of January, please. Well, I can't really do that because I won't be here on Wednesday the 17th of January at 11.50 a.m. Will you do will you, he'll, he'll be I here. I don't know. I, uh... Sorry, he's talking to someone. Her name is Diana Little of Sing Six Kings Link, Sherry Valley, in Belfast, and she will be 45 years of age that day. She's very annoyed about her weight. And she goes to Weight Washers. I'm sure she'll appreciate that, being told to everybody. And Anne, this is, that's from the gang, and Anne says, Please play a country western song for my friend Diana Little of Six Kings Link in Cherry Valley. It is her birthday on Wednesday the 17th of January. Please play it at 12. Well, I'll ask him in there. Hello, you? No. Hello. Hello. What? So, Jerry, is the last resort. I don't, I, I don't blame you for making on the last resort, is it? Good morning, Jason. Okay. Yeah. No. I know, I know. Right. Well, what's your phone number? Okay. Right. I haven't called the last resort right. before. It, it, and your first name is? <coughs> right, right, right. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Give me about five minutes, okay? Right, Marie. All right, Marie. Bye bye. Bye. Are you doing requests next week? That's entirely up to you. I've had your book.
What book? The one that tells you about all the things that happened a hundred years ago. I don't do that. You do? Know, I do not. I see you looking at it. I do that for questions. I, I get just, questions. No, you don't. I do so. Yo, about Napoleon being I born. I do Ah, not. Napoleon went to St. Helena for under that kind of stuff. I'll this tell day, you, excuse 50 me, years ago. Excuse me, the last question that I got out of that book I asked on the Wii program, what animal's head changes colour when it gets angry? That was the last question I got out of that Wii book. What was the question? What animal's head changes colour when it gets angry? Sounds like Barry Cowan. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a great question. No, no. no. See, let me. I'm going to tell the people about the book. I, we all know about the book, and you've discussed the book. I do the not. The people need use, to be told because you have already told the, the people. The people need to be told. There I, is a do book. You know who uses the book? It's called Extracts. I'll tell you. We've done this before. Eamon Friedel uses the book. I know he does. That's because he has no shame. I know. It's a book that's. Let's been name the people who use it. I'll name the people who use it. Bennett uses it. Yes. Yeah. George Jones uses it. Right. Hugo can't find it. And <laughs> they all use it, but you see, they should they should always say they're using it because yeah. I think it's disgraceful the way the number of it. It's a book, and well, I think it's, I, know. I think it's disgraceful. You know what it's like? It's like you know the way the Pope, uh, <laughs> you know the way a Pope prints a book. All the books you're not supposed to read. What's it called? What? You know the thing. You know the Pope prints a list of all the books that you can't supposed you're not supposed to read. He Who's does. It? Well, he doesn't do it personally. Remember, there used to, right. used to be a, the index. That's what it's called. The Vatican index. Oh, yes. And it's a secret book, and it's full of things that... It's like Richard Nixon's list of people he didn't like. How does he know you can't read them? The Pope knows. He knows that we shouldn't read them because he knows what's bad for us. But he must read them. <laughs> he must read them first to check out, see if they're okay for us not to oh, read. Right, right. Can you, don't you understand that? It's yeah. elementary. Yeah. Anyway, there's a book that's called Extracts. And somebody from England prints it. And it's a horrible, horrible book. Your photograph is in it. I don't care. I didn't want it in it. And it's full of local DJs from England. And they all have crew cuts and they're all smiling. And they're all dressed up as gorillas, aren't they? They're always dressed up as something. Tell me this. Uh, you're the man I could ask. Mm. I was told the other day that it was Elvis Presley's birthday. Was it? it? Could on well have Monday been. Monday or Tuesday? Could well have been. It, it slipped past. Monday on Monday. It was slipped, it? Slipped. Now, was it? I don't know. Don't Literally be aggressive I. with me. I don't know. I'm not being aggressive. I don't know. Did you know? Everybody knows when he died, but few people know when he lived. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I want to talk about something today, and it's finally come home to roost. The people have finally... Did you see the Belfast Telegraph last night? And indeed, all, all, most newspapers yesterday. On the front of the Belfast Telegraph last night was a list of the petrol prices... Yeah. All over the whole yes, British Kingdom. Yes, 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 yes. We have the dearest petrol in the whole world. Sure, we always knew that. We never knew that. We Apparently, there's a so. man in some Hebridean island who pays a hippie more, but yeah. apart from him, yeah. there is no. Do you know what I think? I think it's a job for Underboy! <laughs> Yes, gliding through the sky with his cape trailing. This man brought down the price of bread. He finds out how to get chewing gum from wooden floors belonging to churches and by thunder after reading the Belfast Telegraph last night. He realises there's one more job left to do before he leaves his seat and gives it to Mr. Coyle who'll read crap out of extracts and say that Napoleon was born a hundred years... That was good there, wasn't it? Ah... Uh... That sounded like the start of something. Are you not funny, isn't it? No, there was no more. Oh, well, you, uh, well, what's your campaign now to get the price of petrol? I just made it up. I just thought I'd start a campaign. All right. I just thought I'd do that. Let me try it again. For Wonder Boy! Wonder Boy! I think something should be done, really. Yeah. I want to marshal all the force that we have at our disposal. It hasn't been the same since Peter Bottomley left. He used to talk to you. Peter Bottomley was the Minister of Transport. In Hillsborough. But see, since Ma Peter Mandelson, I haven't been through that door. I used to be a regular. Used no, to, you used to never talk to Mandelson. I used to get full and he used to send me home in the car and everything. Uh. He liked me and he used to play his flute for me. But see, since Margaret Thatcher took him away, <laughs> it hasn't been I the same. My, my influence has waned since then. Remember, I used to, I wield, I used to wield a lot of influence. Yeah. Me and Rafferty. Could you turn there. me off, please? Ah, oh, the good old days. Well, they never come back. Will you please turn me off? Will you no come back again? Will you no come back again? 
What's after that? This Billy Boy who called the wall sing the tilde with me. Is that the way it goes? Something like that. I have to play something here for people. Wish you would. Turn me off, please. Is there that we have to do today? I have an awful nagging feeling. Yes, there's a man wishes to talk to you in a moment or two. No, he's not there. I must ring him. All right, then. Don't, please, just let me get my bearings here. I just feel as if there's something I should be doing today. I don't know what it is. But I'll think about it now. But first of all, I promised to play a little song for somebody. It's a song that I play every once in a while. It's by Peggy Lee. It's called The Folks Who Live on the Hill. I'm going to play that for somebody. I'll remember who it is after. Look, that automatic start isn't automatically starting. Is your white button pressed? My white button. It's none of your business. No, it's not pressed. No, that's, that's what the trouble is. I pressed the white button when I came in, but it seemed to ignore my pressing it.